things so that I can be as cool as them and do all that kind of stuff. Um, basically, if we can eliminate what automated tools do, yet demotivate the top group, you can usually start slowing down pirates or at least maybe stopping them uh, because these guys are relying on all the tools produced by these guys. If you make something annoying but these guys don't want to waste their time, you're probably going to succeed. So, what are their motivations? So the, the small group is usually like the actual true reverse engineers. They love the challenge. Uh, it's basically every time you say, I've updated my application and it's new undefeatable DRM, that's like saying, you guys stink, come get me. So you're basically kind of, you know, cat and mouse game. You're, you're trying to play, uh, you know, my application's better than yours and they're just eating that up. They, they love that challenge. As a reverse engineer, the, the more applications, the more uh, updates you come up, with, uh, you know, the more challenges we have to break it. So it's, it's almost like a catch-22 with their motivation. Um, they appear to normally respect authors, at least in the Android community right now. Uh, if you go to certain websites where people are, are pirating these things, you can see people are lining up and saying, like, I want this app, I want that app. This app hasn't been pirated yet. What can we do? Um, try being nice. Ask these people. Just, you know, don't heckle them. Don't tell them they're horrible people. You know, even if you think they are, you can always just ask these people, be like, hey, guys, like, Great job, you broke my software. That's really cool. Um, can you stop doing that? And I've seen this on forums, and people actually have gone, I'm not going to pirate this application anymore. If anyone wants it, go buy it. They were there for the challenge. They weren't there to steal money out of your pocket. They probably bought your application legitimately. Um, the large group, these are people you're probably not going to be able to reason with. These are the guys that if you came and you said, like, guys, please stop pirating my application, they're going to be like, you're banned from my forum, and here's some expletives that I'm going to yell at you and call you different things. Uh, they're usually just too cheap to pay for anything. You go on these forums, you see people talking about, this was 99 cents, I'm not paying 99 cents. This app is so horrible, and I don't want to pay 99 cents, but I really want this app, and someone please steal it for me. It's like, okay, well, if you're not gonna pay 99 cents now, they're probably not gonna pay 99 cents tomorrow, so you never know, these, these people might just be a lost cause. They're not gonna buy your app, most likely. Uh, the interesting part about this, I think, is none of these people are getting paid. You might be getting paid to write these applications, but none of these people are ever actually paid to reverse your application or break your protection. Uh, maybe they are in some like weird state sense and you have this awesome application, I, I don't know, but I highly doubt any one of these guys is getting paid for everything. They're just doing it because they think it's fun. These guys think they're gonna get like internet fame even though they're not using their real name. If they are, they usually get caught and thrown into some weird jail cell maybe. Um, so it's basically, you're making a challenge. When you implement DRM, you're basically saying, you can't break this. So it's, it's a big F you to the author sometimes. So you know people love this kind of challenge, and this is what they thrive on. This is why they became reverse engineers normally. Um, so unless you're a DRM company, and it's not your, you know, it, it is your day job to actually try and prevent people from breaking applications, it might not be super worth it for you to invest a super large amount of time. Because remember, none of those guys are getting paid yet they're taking all the time out of their day just to break your stuff for free, and maybe your development might be spent better elsewhere. Um, so, so that brings me to the point of demotivation versus more work. Like, so can, can we stop these guys at all? I mean, if, if they just eat all this stuff up, like how can we actually stop people? Um, by presenting them a bigger challenge, I was actually talking to a lot of people in a couple of reverse engineering uh, channels over the past few days, like, what would stop you from reversing things? Everyone says, if it's boring. If I have, I've seen it before, but it changed a little bit, and it takes me too long to look at it, and actually fix something, or actually like change my solution, then they don't want to bother. So like, you know, incrementally updating your DRM, and if it just takes too long, people just get bored with it, and the people who actually know what they're doing just stop wanting to. Like, they've already beat your solution the first time, that was the challenge. Next time when you modify it slightly, they're like, I've already done this. It was a real big pain in the ass then. It's gonna take me up four hours, and I really don't care because I already bought their app, or I don't like their app, and that's, this was the only fun part. Um, so that can usually actually work, and that's what I call just like a demotivation tap. Uh, make it so that someone doesn't actually wanna just, you know, uh, reverse your application because there's just either no challenge or the challenge hasn't changed enough, or they just don't care to do that. Uh, if you're, like I said, if you're making something that's really, really complicated, and a lot of authors do this, and then go out of their way to say, I fixed it and you can't break it, you're basically like just painting a big target on yourself and saying like, come at me because I said you guys stink. And that's just like the greatest motivation to them at all. It's like, hey, this is this awesome new tool that nobody's been able to break. I'm gonna break it first.
first. Um, so both can make more work for developers, so it's basically like a cost benefits, like do you really think all the pirating is actually affecting you? Uh, if, if you look online, um, Rovio was recently saying something along the lines of, uh, you know, there is piracy out there, but it's probably helping us because people are pirating the app, and then maybe the updates don't come out that fast, and then they finally break down, they're like, you know what, I actually really like this game, and I want my updates now because I need to throw more birds at pigs, like, I'm just going to update. So, you know, frequent updates to your app might help, uh, adding new content, it's basically slowing down, like, your release cycle is usually going to be faster than a reverse engineer's. Um, so, like I said, it's basically Catch-22. Do you want to just spend more time developing DRM? And again, if you're not a DRM company, maybe you don't. Maybe you want to be adding more features. I hope people want to add more features over just you know, providing updates that break cracks. Um, and like I said, you know, if, if your DRM takes too long and it's just not interesting to look at, people probably don't want to solve it. They want interesting problems to solve. And as I said before, really just reach out to these people. If it's one of the well-known crackers and you ask nicely, they're usually actually pretty nice guys and they say like, yeah, I completely get it. Like, I'm, they're probably developers themselves and they're probably just gonna say, okay, I'm not gonna part your application anymore. It was a good challenge and I've, I've seen this many times with people actually posting on forums. Um, so what are pirates actually doing right now? Most of them, as I said, are using anti-LDL. And this was by Lohan Plus. Essentially, the way this works is it box models the app and then the guy wrote a parsing engine that sits on top of that. It reads all your uh, Smalley files and it looks for generic ways to break your application. So if you were using Google's anti-LDL, uh, excuse me, Google's LDL, which is where he got his anti-LDL name, basically looks for that normal function that says, was I registered? W was this good? Did I get a good response? It basically changes back so it doesn't say false. It will never say false. It's just always going to say true. And this is the way he automated it. He's also added different hooks for Amazon, for Verizon. Um, if you guys have ever seen like an LD preload uh, hack, which is on Linux, so basically you're saying like, if you're calling this function, hit my function first. This is basically one of the ways he's trying to prevent people from doing anti-piracy. So if you, one of the normal techniques to try and uh, detect if someone's done something to your application, you call the package manager and you say, what's my signature? So what they did is they said, Anytime someone ever says, "What's give me the package manager, hook that function. Call my function. If they ask for their own signature, give them the signature that used to actually exist in their file. So now the application basically goes, hey, what's my signature? Anti-LBL intercepts it, basically says, here's your old signature, because you don't really care about the new one. And your application doesn't understand that it's been pirated, so it's just going to keep on going. Um, after it does all those hooks, basically just smallies it back together, resigns with a new key. And like I said, it's, it's using that protection so that APKs can't actually detect that they've been modified. Um, the other one, which is, this is actually a really interesting tactic. Uh, it's called Lucky Patcher. This was by Chelpus. Uh, and basically it's inline patching of DEX files. This is similar to what we've seen on um, you know, Windows PCs and whatnot. When someone wants to actually uh, crack something, they're going into the memory and they're modifying the actual memory uh, for, on this, in Android, excuse me, it's actually the, uh, the executable code that's saved to disk that's then loaded into memory. So they're basically going to be scanning for patterns, and they basically say like, oh, well, th this is the pattern that I want for this application, and I'm going to change this uh, if greater than or if equals to uh, if doesn't equal. So that if you had something that was, uh, you know, is this registered? If it's false, go here. If it's false, go here. They look for that, and then they just patch that in line. So it doesn't actually change the integrity of your APK. It's just changing the actual ODEX file, which is an optimized DEX file that is loaded onto that person's device. So the interesting part on this is uh, where BoxMolly is actually going to be uh, modifying the actual file, and then the files can actually try and see if there is any uh, modifications to themselves. This one doesn't do any modification to the actual APK, so the signature is still going to be valid, and all the code has not actually been changed in that APK. Tyler. Good point. So BoxMolly is, is going to be one that is run on like a developer's machine. It's just a jar, and you basically then install that modified executable. This one is run only on rooted flight phones, because these are the, it modifies the Dell cache, which is not writable by a normal user, so they have to be a root user to do this. So it's kind of an interesting one to try and detect, because it's only going to work on rooted phones. That's probably a smaller subset of users. 